Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover several topics all in one style. These topics have been requested over and over again so I thought I'd cover them all in one. First being is how to braid fine hair. Um, also how to cut and measure braiding hair. We're also going to work on how to prep it for knotless braids. Then I'm going to show you guys how to actually tree braid. This is the old way of doing um, feed-ins where you leave the hair out for a full goddess look. And then I'm also gonna show you guys how to seal those ends without the use of an adhesive or glue. So if these are skills you guys wanna fine tune or you're just interested about, make sure you stay tuned. Before we get started, we're going to shout out this week's top answers for the pop quiz. If you would like to catch the next Instagram pop quiz, head on over there and follow me on Instagram at VLS Hair Design. Make sure you turn on post notifications so that you don't miss the next upload. Jumping into the video, I'm going to begin by prepping the hair. My client requested gray color 51 hair. This color does not come in the pre-stretched version that I know of, so we're gonna have to do this the old school way with the Classic Expressions braiding hair. This is a knotless look, so I'm also going to be prepping all of my feed-in pieces on my 120 spool rack. This will be also about waist length, so I want the hair to be around 16 to 18 inches. To achieve this, I'm going to cut the Expressions hair into thirds. To get an accurate measure without breaking out the ruler and to avoid wasting hair, I'm simply going to fold the hair into three so that with each fold, I get equal lengths. Then I'm going to make my cuts along the fold lines. Once I've cut my desired length, I then need to stretch the hair to achieve the tapered look. This part is super important, especially for the goddess look because we will be feeding in curly pieces at the bottom. To stretch the hair, I'm going to hold it in one hand and then pull small pieces of the hair out about three to four inches. It's important to maintain your grip because if you loosen it too much, you may end up with more tangles than you care to deal with. After I pulled all of the hair and the ends look tapered, I am then going to brush the hair out with a paddle brush. A hard bristle brush works best for this. Now that I've stretched the whole pack, I am now ready to prep. So another question I get quite often is how large of a piece do you prep for feed-ins? Unfortunately, there is no definitive answer for this because feed-ins are something that takes practice and you will need to know yourself over time to really understand what you feel comfortable with. Since I've worked with this client before, I know exactly what size I need in this case. But when I'm working with a new client, I will typically prep pieces about the size of half of a pencil width. This is a pretty standard size because if I need to break down the pieces as I work, I only have to break down a couple. Or if I need larger pieces, I will just grab two or three at a time. At the end of the day, every client is going to have different hair types and densities. So prepping this way allows me to adjust if needed. For the curly ends, I'm going to be using the Freetress brand crochet hair in the color gray. This is in the curl pattern Deep Wave. I'm simply going to remove the hair from the package and begin prepping it on a second spool rack so I can easily access it. The size of the pieces I'm prepping for this are going to be about half the size of the expression hair or one quarter the width of a pencil. The 
The total amount of hair I ended up using for this style was one and one third pack of the Expressions hair and two full packs of the Freetress because we were going again for a full goddess look. So here's a look at the hair type I'm working with. As you can see, it's super fine and super straight. Her roots are dark with a hint of blonde, but the ends are definitely um, of a grayish tone. And before anyone chooses to get loose in the comments, I've seen this hair type on all races and nationalities. So I don't care if this person was black, white, blue, purple, or red. She wants gray goddess braids, so that's the service I will be providing for her today. I've already made my way halfway through this set, so let's dive into the technique I'll be using for this hair type. So I hate to break it to you guys, but there's really no special sauce or formula to making this work, besides the fact that I always start my knotless braids with an extension at the root. This goes for every single hair type. This means I add in a piece of hair before I ever start the first rotation, which I am demonstrating here. I will also note that with fine hair, little stray hairs tend to make their way into the working section. So don't be afraid to use product to smooth everything out. You can use the exact same products that you use on every other hair type. You know from my other knotless tutorials, when adding in feed in pieces, you want to add them under and not over the rotation. This is how you get a seamless feed in. To achieve the goddess look, as I move down the braid, I'm going to add in pieces of the curly hair. When adding in the curly hair, I want to braid about two or three rotations first. Then I'm going to pull out one piece, clip it out of the way, then continue braiding. This is what we used to call tree braiding because you're creating little branches away from the base or the trunk. This is also where feeling out the density comes into play. If I want to build up the braid, I will feed in more pieces of the hair I prepped. I can also feel the strength of the hair. Even though this is a feed in, the extensions add weight, which if you add too much can cause breakage from gravity over time. I am only gonna add in enough to one, build up the braid to the thickness that I desire, and two, be able to tuck the ends in comfortably. So once I've made my way to the ends, I'm going to seal off the braid so that only the curly ends are left. Some people will stop braiding and add a drop of nail glue, but I like extra security. So what I'm going to do is tie some knots around the bottom. I'm going to grab a small piece of hair that's long enough and begin looping it around and pulling it through. I'm going to repeat this about four or five times until I have something that looks a little bit like this. Now I could stop here and add glue again, but I don't wanna do that today. Instead, I'm going to grab my mini travel flat iron and tap the knots. The heat from the iron is going to fuse the synthetic fibers in the hair together and lock the knot in. Now this little iron is perfect because it only goes up to 350 degrees. When doing this, you don't want the heat to go above 400 because you'll just burn it all off. I have found the sweet spot to be between 350 and 390. So all I have to do is tap it a few times. Once I'm sure the knot is secure, I'm going to cut any straight pieces off the bottom because those just ain't cute, sis. I'm also going to use the iron to smooth down flyaways because I won't be able to dip this hair in hot water. 
if I do dip this hair in hot water, the curls will relax and I've completely ruined the style. So that's a wrap, you guys. All that's left to do is to set and define the curls using the Vigorol Mousse. I'm going to trim the ends and she can be on her way. I believe it only took me four, to, four and a half to five hours to complete and she rocks these braids absolutely beautifully. So I couldn't be more proud of how amazing they look on her and how well they have held up. I will be sure to leave links to all the products and tools I used in today's video in the description box below. I hope you guys learned something new and I will catch you in the next video. Bye. But wait, before you go, it is testimony time. If you've learned something from braid school and found value from this content, be sure to leave your testimony in the comments below for a chance to be featured in an upcoming video. You never know how your story can positively impact someone else's journey. If you like this video, you'll probably like these. Subscribe for more videos like this here each and every week.